We watched Doom, a movie based on the first-person shooter video game of the same name starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This movie is unforgivably bad. It's just an atrocious mess. Sam, Sam, no. We actually watched the 1983 sci-fi epic, Dune. Oh god, that's even worse. We are in defense of bad movies! <laughs> Everybody, Sam here. Welcome to another episode of Independence of Bad Movies. Hey guys. Hey. Hi Sam. I'm, Hello. I, I'm joined by my always outrageous cohort, uh, Laura King. Hey. She's always outrageous. <laughs> truly, truly outrageous. <laughs> Bobby Mattern. What's up? And Lauren Bowen. Hi guys. How's everyone doing? I think I asked that, but that's okay. <laughs> and we have a special guest defender this month, Matt McCabe. Yay. Just Cabe, actually. Uh, do what did I get in Cabe? Uh, that's yeah. actually the third uh, most used mispronunciation of my name. Oh, that's what are the first and second? Cabe. Okay. And Kabili. And then McCabe, because I think McCabe is like a very McCabe common a Irish name. name. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. That's weird. And Just I've seen Cabe. it in print, I don't know how many times. Yeah. So. Do you prefer Matt or Matthew? Um, Matt. Matt. Yeah. Everyone Not Maddie. Those. Anything but Maddie. Ooh, no, Ooh. you're a grown-up. Yeah. 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 And, Nobody calls and male. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very nice of you to join us. Thank you for having me. Less nice of you to make us watch Dune. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Don't be sorry. You're in defense. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> you're just in our place. Before we do that, let's do... You know what, Laura? <laughs> I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put my cell phone on silent. Okay. And... Oh, it already was. And I'm going to give you an extra five seconds, because this movie... It I think a... you... No, you can give me ten seconds, because I have something prepared, so... Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> ten seconds, okay. period? Yeah, That's... Oh, seconds. my goodness. Okay. To summarize uh, this movie. So, yeah, the, the uh, Laura's ten-second movie synopsis. Whew. Down from the usual 15. Okay. Okay. And... Go. Kyle McLaughlin plays the chosen one, who has to command an army of blue-eyed people and worms to overthrow the government... Who over, who overthrew his family, and that is literally all. Wow! <laughs> and yet, that's impressive. And yet, the movie starts off with <laughs> with a floating head telling us, oh, volumes of information. <laughs> but you don't really need to know that. That scene was actually longer. What? They cut. They cut. I mean, a lot I'm, of stuff was cut out of this movie. But that like scene, a, it's there was a lot more dialogue. Two seventeen theatrical, yeah. but like there's a three hour cut out there. And I've little, heard there's a four hour cut oh, too, but I don't know is. if that's correct. <laughs> I think what ended up happening was they they finished principal photography before mm-hmm. they did any of the special effects type stuff, and uh, the studio got that footage and freaked out <laughs> basically, <laughs> and just Fair. started cutting. What if the four-hour cut was amazing and everything so, made sense? Right? I feel like that's probably what David Lynch would say. Yeah, like, because Dune is Dune is his uh, Dune kills him. This is great. Story. <laughs> yeah. uh, is okay when you say the introduction part was longer. Was it stuff that was actually filmed, or was it just the, the same talking head talking longer? It was the same talking head talking longer. Oh my longer. god! Uh, this is there just was yeah, on the Blu-ray. Know. There's deleted scenes, and they include some of her stuff. Is that uh, why she disappears in the papers? I, I think that she <coughs> yes, remembers. Actually. Oh, I really? thought I thought it was like, and I'm done. Oh wait, no, I forgot this important thing. <laughs> <laughs> so she fades out. Like, oh no, wait, one more thing. It's gonna be really interesting, and you're gonna need it. Oh. <laughs> and, and Laura makes a really interesting point. I, I think in the book, and you haven't read the book, right? No, no. Um, you I, can probably explain a whole lot, and that's kind of okay because you could go back yeah. and reread it. You mm-hmm. could, but in the movie, to get the point of what the movie was really about, it seemed like we had way too much information, stuff we did not need. There was we had the talking head, and then after the talking head, we had like the computer screen images of some other voice that we don't know right. showing pictures of the planets and who owns that planet mm-hmm. and why they're important, mm-hmm. and that. That was weird, too. Like, who is this person now? Why are we hearing this information? I do wonder if uh, he there were other shots that were filmed mm-hmm. that kind of 
more gracefully that makes sense. introduced like, the, that's the, the, studio the world. Coming in. But uh, it might just have been that literally for time constraints, they did that. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just to bring you in and say, look, here's what we got, and now let's move on. The talking head in theory doesn't... Like, I thought that was kind of weird and neat. Like, Star Wars front loads with a lot of, like, written yeah. exposition. Mm-hmm. It's true. Like, I think Blade Runner does it, too. I mean, like... Yep. Um, it's not terrible. Yeah, like, it yeah, happens, no. and you need something to facilitate the exposition. The, whether or not any of that information was like yeah. pertinent to the rest of the uh, movie is. Yes, so, that's yeah. highly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was kind of, I was, I was on board. Uh, and the, oh, I, I feel bad that I checked out right when she was explaining the concept of spice. Oh, that, that's like, probably where you shouldn't be checking. That, I know, <laughs> and that's like it's the thing from the book, and so it's like, okay, it's not the movie's fault, but like. That we're in super space world, but then we have this subject called melange, which mm. we call spice. Yeah. And it's spice super, melange. it controls longevity and like open travel. consciousness and time travel and like space manipulation. And then they hint at something else that it does, which you're like, but, you're like, you oh, okay, that's going to that's gonna come back. Right. That's going to be a big thing. This is super well, amazing. And yeah, it doesn't touch on that. Yeah. And then also in your super crazy future world, like don't choose really common words. Like melange is a word we use now. Mm-hmm. And spice is a really <laughs> mundane word for this magical thing. Mm-hmm. Like, is it a relation to the spice trade? We're like, it's nutmeg and everyone's crazy for nutmeg and their wars are fought over it. It was a <laughs> Very strange. Like I'm already a little. It's like tea. Set off. It's like tea, but magical super tea that doesn't do much in the film. I, I also have a question about: Was this intended to be the first movie in a series? I actually don't know. I think okay. that was the thing. I was looking around. It did okay. sound like okay. they were there's talk of doing more, and then that David makes Lynch a lot more studio. sense. I mean, it, this was f- long before the time of let's turn this into four movies. Right. But it, it's possible that could have happened. He, in, wa- in, he wasn't even the first director chosen. Yeah, uh, Ridley Scott was supposed to. That was an interesting one initially. too. Yeah. Um, and then Jodorowsky has yeah. his whole Dune thing mm-hmm. that's separate from this. But apparently, that non-made movie is far greater than. <laughs> than the one that we got. It sounded like there was discussion that David Lynch would go on to do Dune Messiah, which is the next book, but then oh. that fell apart after this didn't yeah, do Yeah, that, well. that would have made sense then I because wonder, of how much, how and, rich the universe was. And that seems unfair. I mean, they gave out cheat sheets to everyone in the audience with, you know, a glossary of terms and <laughs> household explanations when they went to see the movie in theaters. Here's the cliff notes yeah. that we're going to need to... Please, Please realize they, really they did do that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It makes sense. I mean, like what we were talking about earlier, we all watched the movie with uh, subtitles, you know, and it's only, it's, I feel like even after seeing it so many times, I need the subtitles still just for the names, getting things correct, the words and stuff like that. It is the trouble of like big, it's crazy space names and it's a really complicated mythology, like double trouble. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) So you, so you, but you like the movie. Oh, I love (laughs) it. Let's talk about that. Uh, Okay. Let's see. Where do I want to begin? <laughs> um, the main reason that I like Dune is probably because of David Lynch and really nothing else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that if you if you look at the, the, the backstory of what happened with Dune and the, the way that the studio basically chopped it up and took what they could use, even if it didn't make sense in the film, because there's a lot in the film that doesn't really connect. Um, I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> even with all that done, it still, to me, feels like a David Lynch movie. And that, to me, shows how great of a filmmaker he is, that even <laughs> when the studio destroys what he's, what he's done, it can, his presence and his vision can still come through. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm... I don't. Is anyone? Did anyone like it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel bad. I don't know um, I like you so far. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're a very nice person. Well, I'll say I'll say this. Like, it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting I, concept. I don't know if it was executed well, but uh-huh. I thought it was an interesting concept, I, and yeah. it was very hard to follow. But. Oh, yeah. um, I could, I don't, I've never seen anything by David Lynch before. So this was an interesting introduction to him. It seems like he has a real vision in his. It had some of those films. lovely 80s sci fi movies <laughs> matte paintings yes. of larger those rooms were, yeah. that yes. look very yeah. are... interesting and H.R. Giger like. like this and I think they're well done. Movie. They actually, yeah, for a painting, neat. they look. Oh, yeah. I was actually worried that I didn't know much about the movie. I was afraid that 
it would suffer like the, the absolute worst thing a movie could be, which was just boring. And it was not boring. Yeah. It was batshit crazy, but it was not boring. Yeah, there's <laughs> oh, a, good. There's I'm a serious... <laughs> well, because that's there, that was my biggest fear that you guys were like, this was the most boring thing I've ever there, seen. There were boring aspects, but yeah. yeah, there was a lot of batshit crazy stuff that like, oh yeah, okay. There, mm-hmm. There's like a certain type of bad movie where it's like, this this movie can't be accused of being like lazy or soulless. Right. It's it's totally insane. I mean, it's <laughs> it's like a vision gone completely awry. Or, a fever or dream, yeah. Or yeah. yeah. But, um, a fever dream would be a good. But I think that makes it a very interesting failure. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I I have to yeah. admit, I'm so mad because there was enough that the talk of like the three or four hour you know cut and like I kind of want to watch that <sighs> because I want to see like if it makes more sense. Like I'm enough interested in the story like would that be the better movie and I'm mad because I absolutely don't want to watch that yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would bad, love to watch that because there is curious. a lot of abrupt things that happen yeah, in the like movie maybe that that's don't a better make film. sense even the introduction yeah. that we were talking about she's a character in the movie <laughs> but <laughs> which we figured out and, slowly I, you I, figure that out slowly and if you watch the deleted scenes when they get to the end of the film there's a scene that was cut out um, and I think rightfully so, but Kyle MacLachlan's character basically tells her that she is going to be his wife so that the Atreides name can, you know, ascend oh, to the throne and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what she was there. He's dumping Sean Young? No, 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 no. Oh, she, oh, okay, she, she, he walks over to Sean Young after that and says, she will only have my name. You have my love and my heart, and will oh, always be. And that's what women love to hear. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm married to her, but I love you, baby. Yeah, you just, <laughs> women do love me. <laughs> you just stay living in your underground dwelling. And I, I've used people. that line a lot. <laughs> it works. <laughs> now, I was going to ask. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, oh, so does she? Aside from her opening thing and her little thing a little bit later, does she have any dialogue? Uh. No, even in that opening scene with the, with uh, Jose Ferrar's character, the Emperor, he she like is by his side and she and he tells her to leave. And I think that's like one of the only scenes we see her in, and then she walks yeah. off. That is such an interesting choice. I mean, I guess it makes it, sense if you know that it was cut up by other people. Yeah. Later My on. guess is that she had a lot more yeah. uh, dialogue and a lot more scenes. Huh? Yeah, she is she's at the end, and maybe she's she's a, a, yeah. she shows up. But she's yeah, she's there. Yeah. Maybe she's, she's, she's more in the books, and so it's like if you know the books, she, you know that this chick is right. Be important. But maybe she was like so far on the outside. That's what makes her such a good storyteller. That's she was an observer from the outside. That yeah. Oh, I don't think she's a very good storyteller. No, no, no. <laughs> she goes in and out. She know. really does. She explains things like far too quickly. Like, all right, two years. This they fell in love. There was fighting. You know, you're good. You guys. I really Let's do love. love the, oh, by the way, I forgot. I love that. <laughs> the most important thing. She's just telling this tale casually. Like, see, no, this crazy thing happened. <laughs> well, the reason I asked any of you guys if you liked it or not, because I am definitely in a minority. <laughs> David Lynch doesn't even like this. Story. You know what, though? What was so weird, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I was shocked, utterly shocked, to see that on, on IMDb, it's got a 6.6. It does. I yeah. expect, for something like that, I expected it to be much lower. And in Rotten Tomatoes, 56%, which is just shy of a fresh that's rating. Not, that's more, not than, than more than half the like people. Not yeah, like this that movie. is insane Maybe, it's, maybe to me. it's got, you know, like this resurgence that's happening and people it, are starting to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be... It, uh, it could be old enough, too, that, you know, like, any movie that comes out, all the critics are going to remark about it. Yeah. But, you know, it was only... It's like people who are passionate about it would have to remark on it now on IMDb or mm-hmm. on Rotten Tomatoes. I yeah, should say. that's so true. That might make them. But, on, but even on IMDb, <laughs> just anyone could be like, "Oh yeah, I don't like this. I'm gonna click two stars. I'd like this. I'm gonna give it eight. So mm-hmm. I think it's better with age. Like maybe thirty years from now, we'll look back and be like, "Oh yeah, when we watched Dune, that was like actually pretty good." <laughs> I think it like the nostalgic aspect of like, "Oh, I watched this when I was younger. Oh, I love the books." And so like, yeah, it's crazy, but I love it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but that was dumbfounding. Just... <laughs> it was, yes, in this cut, certainly, want... there was so much that did not make sense. Just beyond the exposition, it was. Yeah. Hmm. And it's, oh gosh, and it's tough. Like, I know catching up everyone on this really hard-founded sci-fi epic is hard, but, oh, the movie, I feel just the writing didn't do a great job of letting us know the important information and what was happening, because yeah. it took so long to figure out, wait, who is and why and what and there's that's every David Lynch movie <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's just fair. too and I feel like I'm suffering from not knowing him better like uh, that would help inform I was wondering as I was watching it this time I was trying to think of it like if I'd never seen it before and wondering if it would be the 
best David Lynch movie to start off with. <laughs> and then I remembered when we talked about the straight story, that's probably, if you want just a normal movie, that it, it, it's not going to bring you into David Lynch's world at all, but you could start there. And it's a nice little movie with, for the family. But Dune <laughs> might be a good starting point. I mean, really it was his third crazy. movie. It was his, his, th- th- yeah, his third movie. He did Eraserhead and then The Elephant Man okay. and then Dune. Can I ask you a plot question? Yeah. That's toward the beginning of the movie. So this was one I couldn't, I tried to research a bit and couldn't quite figure out. So in the first scene, in one of the first scenes after all the exposition, we go to the Emperor's planet and mm-hmm. he's in the MGM Grand. And then, <laughs> and then a race comes in and it's guys in garbage bags and they have a fish tank with a brain worm with baby arms. Those are body bags, actually. Those are body bags? Okay. Yeah. And, and they then... were used body bags. Okay. They that's... had been used in by the San Diego Fire Department or something like that. That's really? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they didn't tell the actors either. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the brain worm with body arms. Was that the big the big thing? The brain worm with baby arms. In the the guy who looked like the, the queen from um, Starship Troopers. Yeah. Mm. They bring him in, in the, the tank, tank with the sweepers. That yes. thing cool. With the sweepers. It didn't look bad, but my through the movie, I didn't know who they were. And they sort of set the course of the film. They're talking about the movie is between these two warring families, uh-huh. and the good family had, now has charge of the planet that produces this magical spice we all want. Right. And But these people are trying to push forward the war and have the good family killed. Mm-hmm. But who were they? The guild navigators. The guild what does that mean? So they in the deleted scene of the introduction, they include that. Okay. And so the guild navigators, I think cuz I'm I'm not even mm-hmm. for sure on it, but they are the ones that kind of control everything. They they use their minds to telepathically you know okay we later saw the brain worm like when they were folding space to yeah they can they can fold space they don't have to move anywhere yeah they fold space and can go anywhere they want they're in charge they're basically in in charge they're port authority and anytime anyone comes to do a quick jaunt to another planet exactly okay you gotta pay your toll right okay that makes sense so Um, that's why they would be invested in in this happening in the spice okay because I kept waiting for the movie to explain that (laughs) and I was like who are these people I don't think it does why do they have they, it does not. Yeah. I will tell you now. I can't <laughs> understand why they had any influence over the emperor and yeah. why they would have such strong opinions. I actually was wondering why they were sweeping up as he left. Like it was like a courtesy <laughs> to them. Yeah, like, it felt like they left a mess. Still, yeah. anyway. We're sorry. We're sorry, you guys. We're sorry. It's more symbolic like than anything, really. <laughs> I do like that. Scene, you, do, you do have to zoom in like twice in order to get to the like, koi conflict. Like you start with the guild navigators, then you go to the emperor, and then the emperor brings it like to the the, the two families like on mm-hmm. on the Dune planet. What's it called? Um, Arrakis. 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 Yeah. yeah, not one spider to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> and then later, when it zooms back out, and you're like, oh yeah, the emperor and the guild navigators are involved. You're like, oh yeah, I oh, forgot. That's right. yeah. That's it's like a story within a story within a story. Mm-hmm. It's very Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> yeah. There. <laughs> I thought it was a long way to go to just do a normal Ray story, a space normal Ray story, <laughs> which is, it was it turned out to be about like um, and that, u- unionizing kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it was suffering from that. Like we want to have all the cool stuff from the book. Like pick and choose. Like Game of Thrones has mastered the complicated story, but just telling you what you need when you need it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this movie, I think, suffered from that intensely. Yeah, I think when he wrote it, he probably didn't really know where to stop yeah. in terms of like, what do I need to put in here and like, what, what can I leave out? There's this, and then there's this, and then there's this guy. And the names and a lot of the words they use are so complex, and like yeah. except for Melange and Dune. You know, <laughs> and everything Paul. else you're like, they're, they're either very Paul. simple Wait, and Paul has three names. Paul's got to be. His name changes quite names. a bit throughout the movie. Which is the one that kills people? <laughs> He's got a dangerous name. Muad'Dib. Muad'Dib. <laughs> but so wait, is His the Mu- murder name. The, and the Muad... Mu- what was it? Muad'Dib. Muad'Dib. Of course. That's a, that's a different type of chosen one than the... Um, than the... Than the Kwisatz Haderach? That's the one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Kwisatz Haderach is like a super being, like an all-powerful god. He's the messiah that yeah. like, right. the witches are yeah. trying he's to the, he's, genetically engineer. He's the, he's the man who come to save all the women. Of course, because yeah. we <laughs> loved that part, let yeah. me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. We've got like, all these ancient women who like are trying to genetically control the species and have magic powers. Yeah. But oh no, there's this one level that we women can't get to. Men have tried, but they have died. 
<laughs> but someday a man will come to save us all. Isn't this a very quotable movie, though? Yeah. I find this movie highly quotable. Do you find, like, you quote it in daily life? Like, there's always... Oh, yeah. You, could... you know? <laughs> Sting's line before he starts fighting with Paul Sting. That's oh, great. My favorite part... The Righteous? <laughs> it's like his only one. <laughs> I know. I feel like he got cut out a lot. I think the yeah. favorite scene in the whole movie is when the Baron is, like, jerking off to see Sting <laughs> in, the, in the Speedo. That... <laughs> that Baron... And all the evil family Harkonnen. I wish I was watching Mad Max in that moment. Like, for, <laughs> oh, like... the horrible visuals of, like, of course they're evil. Look how disgusting they are. And they're so preposterous. Why did he kill that one guy? Like, uh, because he could. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a With sexual the, thing. It was, okay. Um, it was so, like, the first time we meet him, they're in the room plotting, and, like, he's crazy, and he's floating around, because he can do that, apparently. Like, oh, yeah. he's got his money. Oh, the reveal that he can float around was awesome. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is bananas. <laughs> he was bananas awesome. And then, like, swoops in on the little Aryan boy who's been putting purple tulips into the purple tulip yeah. display. Oh, but he feels like he knows what's coming. And sweeps in and murders him by pulling out his heart plug. And the heart plug is apparently <laughs> not a thing from the book, I read. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because that, that was thing added. Was insane. The heart plug and what was it? The 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 cat? No, no. The, she, oh darn. The the what are they called? The the voice guns. That's not from the book either. Oh, oh wait, yeah, I remember reading that. One. The, the weirding show. modules. The weirding modules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because huh. he didn't want them doing kung fu. Like the weirding module was just a Vulcan death grip or something did, like they did yeah. before. Did he think that there wasn't enough stuff going on that they needed to add things? Since I mentioned it, can I come back to the cat? Oh yeah. The, <laughs> yes, please do. One of the like they okay, so the good family is on Arrakis, like mining the spice, which is important for the kingdom, and then the bad family comes and like overthrows them, and one of their prisoners they have pumped with poison, and they present a hairless cat in a cage. Oh, that's right. that that's you so will have good. to milk it every day to get your antidote. And by the way, there's a rat tape to the side, which is <laughs> duck, important duck for some reason. Did I miss this scene? There was a side How could you cut miss off? this Can I say, scene? I don't think I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking hyperbole. I think that's the greatest way I've <laughs> ever seen in any movie to hold was someone prisoner. The guy with the eyebrows? The guy with the eyebrows. Yeah. Okay, okay, which, yeah, I remember which that. guy with the eyebrows? There were a couple. <laughs> they bring him a hairless <laughs> Thurful. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're not quite known as the Alvarez. That was added also. What? <laughs> I'm reading this was article right now. That, that actual uh, scene was dreamed up by David Lynch. He's he also he's an artist too, and so they had a sketch in like the design portion of the bonus features, and it was literally a sketch of a cat and with a rat tape to it in a cage. A cat rat. Uh, <laughs> Why was there a cat rat? Did he also dream up um, people fighting while in Dune and uh, in Tron blocks? <laughs> that, was, that was cool. What was, that was so crazy. I love that scene. What, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not Duncan, get that. When Duncan gets killed by the dart going through his shield, <laughs> that's amazing. But the dart, the Tron blocks, like so spacey, but really block what's happening. Like I can't see. It's supposed to be a shield. I, I appreciate. That you, you know, that you that put on... But like they're doing that doesn't stuff. work super well? That doesn't work all that well because <laughs> knives can penetrate it, darts can penetrate it, hands apparently can penetrate it. Um, you know. But you have that initial moment where your enemies go, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, that looks badass. Oh no, this is very... So Actually, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> it's, yeah, it looked like rejected Tron stuff. <laughs> But if you imagine if that existed in real life, like if just suddenly walking around, you like threw that on, that would look cool. Mm -hmm. If you're not yeah. existing in 80s sci-fi you know, <laughs> effects land, like what is happening? Especially your if you're in some wood paneled chamber that doesn't exactly. really look like a, if you are the steampunk, uh, steampunk, and that would steampunk good family, and more of the iconography of why they're the good family. Like they're clearly much prettier. Everything's made of wood. Their costumes are very nice. Even their the, planet is lighter. Yeah, the bad <laughs> yeah. world is all like That's metal something and... that's still used today. Though. Yeah, I that's mean, You watch Star Trek. Oh, it's classic. Uh, the but... first reboot of Star Trek. Yeah. And I mean, and they'd make Eric Bana look yeah. Middle Eastern, basically. <laughs> you know? But it's so intense in this one. Like, no, I get these, these you know, uh, indicators. But, oh, man, the bad family's so... Bad I gross. love the Harkonnens. They're so gross. Because Which, they're, disgusting. they're disgusting. Why are they so I disgusting? I could not watch that They're scene. disgusting because... In, in Lynch's movies, he deals a lot with grotesque imagery. Yes, he does. So um, there was no, like, real... I'm not sure if it's in the book or not, okay. if, like, in terms of description, but in in David Lynch's films, you're dealing a lot with uh, with grotesque imagery 
mixed with uh, beautiful imagery, really. Mm -hmm. And he actually has a, uh, there's a term for this one particular scene that's in all of his movies, apparently. It's called the eye of the duck scene. And so to talk about that a little bit, the... There's a, there's a filmmaker named Mark Cousins, and he made uh, the story of film in Odyssey, like a 15-episode documentary on film. And when he talks about David Lynch, and he talks about the eye of the duck scene, he says, It's the scene that often combines the beauty of life with its terror. Because according to Lynch, when you look at a duck, the eye is always in the right place. And that's it. That's, that's literally David Lynch in a nutshell, by okay. the way. He doesn't literally always have an eye of a duck. In the movie. Not it's an eye of the duck, but it's, it's the scene literal. that is the yeah. eye of the duck scene. Do you know scene. what that scene is in this movie? Uh, so, I think there's two. Okay. Uh, the, in, in Eraserhead, the eye of the duck scene is the lady in the radiator scene toward the end of the film. In Blue Velvet, it's a scene where uh, the song Blue Velvet is lip synced. And in Dune, do you guys have any ideas? Any guesses? I'm not so even sure about the concept. So. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Can you say that again with the concept? So the eye of the duck scene is... It, it, the eye of the duck combines the beauty of life uh-huh. with its terror. So I think it's the cat with the rat. <laughs> the it could be. It um, could be. The beautiful hairless cat with that hideous, hairless. hideous rat. <laughs> the rat look cuter. The rat look <laughs> Is it the magnificent pug while things are exploding? <laughs> no. Bobby was so sad. Patrick Stewart clutching died. onto the pug and he's going into battle. <laughs> Patrick Stewart was in this movie, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, the writing the worm into battle. No, no. Although I love that scene. The <laughs> disgusting fake baby in the lava pool that sort of symbolizes it. That's so Lynchian, pool. by the way. It was what? If you've seen, it's Lynchian. If you've uh, seen okay. a head. It was, yeah. it was grotesque. It was very grotesque. <laughs> Bobby actually already mentioned this scene. That is, in my opinion, the, the first Eye of the Duck scene. in. Uh, oh, with the flower and the blood. Mm-mm. No? No. What Bobby talk about? The, yeah. the, the worm, baby arm brain. No, he mentioned it a while ago. It's, a, it's, it's Bobby, the, what'd you say? I don't know. I don't remember what I said. I'm going to give up. Repeat everything you said. It's the scene, it's Sting's Speedo scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> oh that was beautiful so literally in this case it's a physical beauty and and the grotesqueness of this guy's face and then literally right after that scene or right after Sting comes out of his like steam bath or whatever it was and he's in that speedo and you see his body and he's pretty good looking you know and you cut they cut to uh, the Baron's face which is completely filled with boils and uh-huh. pus and all that kind of stuff and he calls for his doctor Where's my doctor? You know, and and in the in the beginning scene, it was like you know he was kind of tending to him. the doctor was tending to him. So that's kind of the idea. Is it's like this this coming together of everything of everything of life, basically the beauty of life, the horror of life, combining in one moment. And uh, that scene actually, Sting was supposed to be nude, and I think that would have actually made it better because. Now, when people watch that scene, that speedo is very distracting, and <laughs> it it's really such was. an important scene in the movie. And I really do feel like if he were naked, it would be less of a joke, and you'd be able to pay a little bit more attention. Maybe <laughs> I was reading through trivia, and they did mention that part, and that it was sort of a last-minute decision, and they had to whip that speedo. They had together to whip that really speedo together very quickly. Which maybe if they had more time to think, they would yeah. realize that's not the a studio good panic. Sting was on board to do it nude. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, he was he on board. Be. He was absolutely on board. Lynch wanted it and done in the nude, and the studio panicked at the last minute. No, because so. no. why not? A penis would be the least offensive thing about this movie. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> oh, go ahead. So, so there was no explanation within the text of the movie about why these people are so boily and hideous. And Mm-mm. okay, no, he Lin- no. Lynch is very famous for not explaining anything in his. Oh. That's made crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, that's he, interesting. It, David Foster Wallace has an article or wrote an essay on David Lynch, and in it he he says the great thing about watching I'm paraphrasing the great thing about watching David Lynch films is that you get to ask all these questions and realize that he never asked them to begin with because it didn't matter to him. Oh, I see. Um, or it never he never thought of it. Um, he's very much an instinctual director, very much from the gut. Uh, an interview asked him one one time. Um, 
when they're watching a scene of one of his films, I think it was the straight story, he said, now, why did you choose this camera angle? And his answer was, because it felt right. That's it's just, fair, but you know what else you know, also feels right is knowing what's going on in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things I needed explaining, I did not need why the bad guys looked gross. Like That's, that's just that's an fair. example. Yeah, yeah. That's fair, but yeah. I agree with Bobby. My favorite bad guy was uh, Brad Dorf by far, though. He made he fun of the Conan. He was fully committed to the Who? bigness. Who was Brad the other, Dorf yeah. was the evil guy with the eraser head hair. He was like the assistant. Mm. The, the, other, yeah. I, the other guy with the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he did great, like, hand gestures, and I'm miming the things I'm telling you. He was in Deadwood. Oh, okay. He, made he was the doctor in Deadwood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he's okay. excellent at committing to big characters, and he really worked for me, and he was the most bearable to look at. The guy who had the eraser head hair in eraser head is in Doom. I remember reading Jack that. Jack Nance. We were looking through he was the people. one that he was giving all those directions to. <laughs> That's Jack Nance, who's also in Twin Peaks. He uses a lot of the same actors, which I, I, I really enjoy that. So, Was it a good idea to have a character continually referred to as the Emperor um, when you already have a really good sci-fi series <laughs> with an Emperor in it? <laughs> <laughs> So I guess that would be hard to change. I just felt. Well, I yeah, think it's true. the idea of like in space. You know, there's an emperor. There's always, how the is space there, emperor. Like, oh, yeah, how is there yeah. Like always a, an emperor of space too. It's space. It feels like it'd be actually, hard to have one guy. In it charge. does feel like there yeah. are families here. There are houses, I should say. So there's not really an empire. He's high king. I don't well, know. that's fair. Maybe it's sort of a misappropriated term. <laughs> it did feel like a hierarchy. You know, yeah. like you've got the house of Trades and the house Harkonnen and then the emperor gets to live on this really badass planet with rings around it and everyone <laughs> else is kind of off to the side on their planets. But maybe his power has been like subverted over time by the I powerful don't... economic interests. He didn't or... seem like that great of an emperor. No, really. not at all. He seems You know, he's kind around. of incompetent. He's like a figurehead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... I have a whole list of questions, and <laughs> I'm just going to slowly start to ask them. It's Laura's question corner. <laughs> um, are they human? Um, well, yeah. Or are they dancer? <laughs> that is the question. It says they are certainly identified as human in the beginning. Like it, but they so. age, and how old are they supposed to be? I, I don't know. I, don't, I personally, I, don't, I can't imagine the Harkonnens being human. Okay. It's sort of, but it's, you know, 20,000 years in the future or something, so yeah, it's like 10, sort of 10, humans through lots of evolution. Well, I was yeah. specifically about Paul, because there's the moment where the, um, I don't know her name, the mother, the mother superior, what, I don't okay. know, oh, yeah, like where she's like, she's like, like yeah, yeah, where she's, she's hounding, Evil nun. Um, <laughs> where, she, where she's, you know, talking to his mom about, you know, like, how you're, you're, you're only supposed to have daughters, but, like, yeah. Paul is a lot older, and then later he has a sister who ages really rapidly over the yeah, course of two Paul, years. Yeah. And so I was wondering if, like, Paul was more recent, or if he was, like, actually supposed to be in his... Well, Creepy Baby only happened after she... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He drank the water of life. We gotta yeah. talk about and her, too. And became super smart. And that's, that's she was also pregnant unpack. at the time. <laughs> the other like... eye of the duck scene involves Alia. <laughs> creepy Baby. <laughs> yes. That was terrifying. Yeah. That baby was creepy enough. And then they ADR a grown-up voice doing a kid voice mm-hmm. over it. And then she starts doing evil mind control voice that sounds like, I'm a demon. There's a deleted scene <gasps> with her original voice as she's doing the lines. And it's worse. <laughs> so, Is it? Yeah. Like, more terrifying? Or no, she just, just has... Good? It's more like babyish. She has, like, a... Li- not a lisp, but she can't say her R's. It's Alicia it's Witt's first movie, guys. Well, that sounds yeah. adorable. Uh, yeah, it's, it's adorable, really. She grows into a lovely young woman. Yeah. But here, terrifying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if that was entirely a choice. That, like, the ADR is so much more unsettling. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. I agree. It was terrifying. <laughs> um... Okay, so this kind of is um, leading to my second question. Or Even though it, I didn't whatever. answer the first one. Um, <laughs> well, we, we don't know. We'll just leave it up in the air. We'll just say, well, yeah, I, think, I think it is that yeah. they, they've evolved over over the course of what, generations of generations of, of human beings. Um, Paul seems to be the, the real question, though, because he is he does wind up at the end of the movie. It turns out he's a, a supreme being. He's a super being. So is he even human at all? Or anything. And he starts with a kind of Harold vibe from Hair of the Nod, where he's just kind of mopey teen. And mm-hmm. like... um, 
why is his mom only supposed to have the the girl lineage? I, I didn't quite understand. I know they were that. Like, yeah, they've yeah, been but... doing that. They're, that's actually another thing that was deleted from the introduction. There was more explanation of that, or I think they deleted all the explanation mm. of that. <laughs> yeah, they have a really quick line and really yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like mother superior evil nun was like it was some sort of genetic thing she was trying to manipulate over generations and generations. Right. Maybe it was like trying to generate more powerful girl nuns through time. Like, it doesn't quite say. And then mom can control which gender of baby she has? Apparently. Yeah. Like, that that's something that can happen. Okay. So, you, know, you have to lay a certain way or, you know, <laughs> think it's like, about you keep your certain feet things, up, eat certain spicy before. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Paul's like, doggy mom. style gets you work. <laughs> <laughs> and so Paul's mom, Jessica, loved her... Duke husband so much that he needed They a boy. weren't married actually. They were, that's right. Oh, she's yeah. a concubine. She's and he's a concubine, sad that he didn't right. marry her. In that deleted scene after he says you will always be mine even though she's going to have my name. That's right. I think it's Lady Jessica that says something really weird about the concubine. Like isn't it great to be a concubine? Isn't it great like you guys? That. Isn't it great? Isn't it so good how you don't get the rights of a respectable wife? I love it. Um, More questions than I can yes, answer. Okay. This is fun. So Dr. Yue <laughs> um when he's revealed to be the traitor working Stop. with the Harkonnens. Mm-hmm. What, um, Dean Stockwell, a traitor? Yeah, he believes it. Why? I mean, like, he mentioned something about his wife being captured by them, but is there anything else to that? I think that was something that was cut from the film. Okay. Because we're supposed to feel a lot more for him mm-hmm. when he's, like, gasping his last breath and saying all this stuff that he was able to do for his wife in becoming a traitor, I guess. I personally think his fam- plan was very flawed. Oh. <laughs> he hates the Harkonnens, so he betrays the good family <laughs> so that he can kill, he can morally wound and capture the dad who can right. then go kill the bad guy because Dean Stockwell promised to protect his concubine and child. Like, if you kill the bad guy with this poisonous tooth uh-huh. that I'm going to put in your brain, then I will protect your family, which he does not because he dies immediately. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is a terrible plan that he has. Yeah, so it doesn't go sound. over too well for him. And the poison tooth doesn't work because it just kills Brad Dorf. Like, <laughs> And the way he removes the tooth was horrible. It was, was not like, nice. <laughs> it was a bad plan all around Dean Stockwell. You need to listen to... <laughs> What's the guy from finally? Oh, Sam Beckett? You need to listen to Sam Beckett more. <laughs> Gushy? Gushy, that's the one I wanted. <laughs> Uh, Ask Gushy for the work. What's with all the voiceover, the oh, thoughts? Oh my god! Yeah, that, that was that was yeah, that was kind of weird. that's Lynchian. Is that, okay? Do that I was wondering if that was very. It feels uh, like a lack. Like, oh god! No, no, go ahead. I just was saying, it feels like either a lack of faith in the screenwriting or in your actors to convey these emotions. Show it, See, don't I say it, guys. I, I found <laughs> yeah. the voiceover totally obnoxious, but I just like. <laughs> After a while, I'm like, no, this doesn't feel like lazy writing necessarily. This just feels like a very deliberate, a uh, yeah, like a yeah, yeah. It is, and I mean, it's deliberate for Lynch in general, and it's also deliberate, I think, for Dune. Lynch, you're you're dealing with someone who is obsessed with the interior and going into things. So it's that idea of going into the mind and being part of it. For Dune itself, these these are people that, well, a few of the characters that that can do things telepathically can it's all about mind control and the weirding way is all about uh the power of the mind over the body and i think that was his deliberate way of trying to convey that on screen but it was really hard to track like okay the thing and a lot of it was very on point too yeah. like like they would say certain things and you would just like well I already knew that yeah, we're, we're yeah. Good. we, we get it, it. Yeah. we're ahead of you he looks scared yeah, we, no, we, we know there. yeah <laughs> but then it was hard to track like okay we're hearing internal thoughts but is this something now that someone else can hear, because is there this were a mind control thing? Yeah. There were, just a yeah. yeah, there were moments where, where other characters yeah. can can hear each other, I there, think, right? Yeah. yeah, but then we couldn't quite tell. There were single yeah. shots of, like, the camera's on Kyle, and we're hearing his internal thought, but yeah. then Dad off-screen says something, and he has a very similar voice. Uh-huh. So it's like, wait, was that a thought? Yeah. Or was yeah. that... Because they sound very close. I think it was kind of like the... The Dexter thing where he can communicate with his dad after he's dead, you oh, know? Really? And, well, that was alive at the time. Yeah. But, oh, well... Wanna, there is a scene where he, he talks to him, not talks to him, but they, talking they communicate After, through when a dad, dream. Through when dream. dad dies, yeah. they, they know, know that dad's dead. Yeah. And he says, I know. I know. What a badass scene. Thank goodness. <laughs> and then he screams, Father! <laughs> a couple times. The sleeper has awakened. <laughs> Which that, scene, that scene was actually uh, put in at the last minute. Really? To save time. They, they 
the him drinking the water of life mm-hmm. that whole scene in the desert was added later and cut out apparently cut out eight or nine scenes up, of up to an hour long that they oh. thought was superfluous basically oh, awesome. oh my goodness. and they replaced it with this one like five or six minute scene and that's why it took place outside because it was just slapdash like oh we already destroyed that set where we did <laughs> yeah, horror, so we gotta just do it on a dune yeah and it looks cool it's epic it does it dunes, fits it's doesn't. very you know connected also, like to that Mad planet Max, you know, she has her, her moment of despair <laughs> no and her amazing hair is, is frank herbert a scientologist a lot of this feels Scientology. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you. Yeah. Scientology. That's a good question. <laughs> I know Lynch is, and he's a Christian. Is okay. he really? Yeah. Wow. Really? It's one of the other reasons why I'm fascinated with him. <laughs> yeah, because I don't understand that connection at all. <laughs> yeah. At all. He's and it's. So... I was actually listening to a Brett Easton Ellis podcast, and he briefly mentioned David Lynch when he was talking to Marilyn Manson about people who have like this outlet for the strangeness of that that's inside them Mm -hmm. are often some of the most docile people and he would mention he mentioned Marilyn Manson he mentioned David Lynch too because he is a very calm Mm -hmm. just seem really nice person really yeah and uh I'm glad to hear that actually oh no he's he's (laughs) I would love yeah, that. Like I watched, um, yeah. yeah, like a document. What was it? The side by side. Have you ever seen side by mm-hmm. side? Yeah, oh, yeah side by side. <laughs> yeah, it was like it's a movie about film versus digital. And mm-hmm. then um, he's like Keanu Reeves, I think, is interviewing him. Yeah, and he just seems like really calm and normal and nice. Huh. Yeah, I mean the, the the for for as weird as his movies are and as as just crazy as they can be, he's just very. Uh, normal that's nice to hear because it's i would absolutely normal. picture him being a diva auteur yeah. and like i don't i don't terror. think so i think everyone that has worked with him just raves about him I he's like not that. he doesn't hurt people or he won't even cuss on set when he oh. blue velvet has a lot of uh cussing in it done by dennis hopper and he and when he, i guess when he would direct him he would say then you got to say the f word <laughs> wow. when he wouldn't even cuss so like the biggest the weirdest things about him in his real life are that he meditates and he's been doing that for almost 30 years i think he meditates every day and he says it expands consciousness and, cool. and all that and he's and, got a swear jar on set that's kind of weird and he he's a, a prodigious <laughs> coffee drinker and he is yeah. still a smoker i think he has oh well, that's a, never mind to back to hating him yeah. <laughs> he has his own He's coffee brand. At, at least I think so. Yeah. 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 His, his own coffee good. brand? Yeah, I've seen David Lynch coffee at Whole Foods. It's got yeah. duck eye on the. It's got cover. LSD. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote down a bunch of random quotes that I love. Oh, um, great. Let's go. Um, let's go. I, we, should have, we should have been put this back when we were talking about Dean Stockwell, the doctor. Um, uh-huh. When you see the Baron, remember the tooth. <laughs> the tooth. <laughs> the tooth. <laughs> Sorry, repeat it. Said over and over and over. Yeah. Um, I want to spit on your head. Just some spittle on your face. <laughs> and then he does. Just a little, and he does. Uh, Can I, before you keep going with those yeah. quotes, <laughs> the Baron is so evil. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's way worse than Darth Vader. If we're going to com- do like a Star Wars comparison, <laughs> I would Vader's much rather. Cute. I would much rather. Darth yeah. Vader's charming. He'll kill you quickly. <laughs> and he's got that, uh, from what I hear, he has like a nice moment. Of, of death like with, with uh, Luke or something from what you hear from what you hear you, you've not seen Return <laughs> of the Jedi I've not seen about Return of the Jedi yes. would you have seen Return of the Jedi if David Lynch directed it Absolutely. instead of this yeah. as was going to happen well, uh, <laughs> yeah what if we told like you? Princess Leia you know monologuing the opening credit scroll at the beginning of Return of the Jedi <laughs> <laughs> amazing you know when they, when, when Princess is, when Princess Leia is in her gold bikini with Jabba right there that's a very um oh duck eye moment oh yeah <laughs> and you know I'm sure Java could have put some spittle on her you know? and, and then also imagine one of those sandworms but it's stationary and it's just the mouth and it's called a sarlacc pit <laughs> because that is exactly what those space worms are <laughs> <laughs> movable sarlacc pit. Yeah. they were real that's <laughs> <laughs> they pulled those worms and <laughs> I love the worms <laughs> the worms are pretty the worms cool are so bad. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, someone made someone mentioned in their review I think it was Ebert because Ebert, Ebert has a very interesting relationship with David Lynch he does not like his movies he did not like uh, his movies until Mulholland Drive and that might be one of the only ones he likes that's interesting um, he, he felt I think he felt like uh, his like experimental style his avant-garde approach was 
not genuine, I guess, huh. and and really not worthwhile. <laughs> so, but he but he did like Mulholland Drive, uh, but he he said that the the worms looked like uh, a Kermit face when their <laughs> mouths were closed, like the Kermit mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It... This wasn't a Jim Henson or a Henson. no, it wasn't I thought the we creature were actually show. Watching oh, no. Batman and Robin and Poison Ivy, like her. Oh, the fly, the fly yeah. 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 I do think some of those eyebrows did look like Jim Henson creations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think they each had their own set of puppeteers yeah. controlling them. Yeah. Right. I'm saying Kyle McLaughlin, when he goes to ride the giant sandworm, is very lucky that that went so well. I feel like he kind of hooks on the side and waits to roll over the top. Like, he is the chosen one, though. So. Happily. But then everyone else, like, apparently him riding mm. it up is like, they'll come and run and play, too. Yeah. And all the other It was a good thing natives. the worm didn't roll the other direction, exactly. for instance. <laughs> and what, does the, is the worm going to not keep rolling? Like, I felt like yeah. that should have been something. It the worm, happened to be the on worm wanted side. them on top. That's right. The, yeah. Come this on. has always been the plan. Yeah. He was the worm whisperer. When he, when he sticks the uh, spike or whatever in there, and then... Even. Yeah, opens up that side. That oh. those are condoms used for like the tendons of whatever, oh, that's fun. The, the worms' <laughs> gills or whatever they are. And it's a, it's a tremor worm, so it responds to uh, <laughs> it is a vibration. Mm -hmm. And oh, I've got so many questions. It responds to vibration, and that's a very big thing. It's very sensitive because it can feel two little people walking arrhythmically across the sand mm -hmm. and come to get them. But when he's being ridden, and then a passel of natives like run up to join the fun, yeah. like he doesn't blink. Like, oh, yeah, okay. I it's guess, almost like only I one worm will respond yeah. to each. That's true. They, you know, there's a, they got a lot going on. Until there's later, probably a lot when, of vibrations to go after. That's right. Until later, when Kyle becomes the Messiah, yes. like, okay, we'll hang out. Now with we're you. all hanging out with you. And the worms. Spoiler alert. Apparently, the worms are the spice. Yeah, can you explain that to me? Oh, but no. But then they <laughs> respond <laughs> to spice mining. It's like spice mining is happening over here, and the worms are going to come get the miners. But are they mining worms at that? What? I honestly couldn't tell if that was like a metaphorical or actual. Yeah, I, I, I thought that too. I was wondering. I mean, maybe but I couldn't even figure out the metaphor. Maybe the spice <laughs> is worm poop, but they still want the poop, and that's why they destroy the miners. Because well, the, the guild navigators use it, uh, like when you when in that scene where the the navigator came in in his little a fish tank or whatever, yeah. uh, the orange stuff coming out of its mouth was the spice. And I think that's what they use to fold space. Okay. And is he a baby sandworm? Oh. oh. With his little vagina mouth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then, oh yeah, that's, I know you won't be able to answer, but I'm so confounded by that plot point of like, how are the worms the spice, but then the worms are defending spice mining, like destroying spice mining. And, yeah. Uh, and they're not destroying themselves uh, in the process. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and if that were, like, when we're mining, you're actually killing a worm, and the other worm comes to save the first worm, like, you know, not much explanation, but like, okay. My answer to all of these questions is, it's in the four-hour version. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, That's going to be your catch-all for everything. <laughs> or it wasn't a question to begin with. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> and if we are sucker enough to watch the four-hour, and that's not answered, well, that's on you. It probably <laughs> just sounded good, you know? Like, when he said it, and David Lynch just liked that. And he wanted to keep it that way. Ba fair. Back to the arrhythmic w walking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wrote down that line. Um, Walk without rhythm and we won't attract the worm. <laughs> They're white. <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't they be fine just however they walk? <laughs> so, they are very white. Those like, worms are really sensitive. I want to hear more quotes. I like Kyle McLaughlin oh, very distressed this. going, what's in the box? It's the box. What's in the box? <laughs> oh, isn't it? I love that. You, so you're going to help me with this one. Linda Hunt. Great actress. <laughs> um, she is a what is it I am the shut out mate what is the word shut out mape I am the shut out mapes yeah the housekeeper <laughs> she had her pit of despair moment it was incredible and then she like, died super fast I know she did. I was so she happy did. to see her like now the movie's gonna get serious yeah you're gonna lead the locals and be like the head of the resistance oh nope. no the housekeeper that was his Hitchcock move <laughs> <laughs> I just she the housekeeper that was very dramatic <laughs> for being a housekeeper. Wait, was, such, was she actually a housekeeper, or was that like a like a, like the gatekeeper? Yeah, like that kind of thing. <laughs> the house is a metaphor for the planet yeah. and its secrets. Oh, let's see. I don't think I have these, out of context. These are hilarious. <laughs> you did mention it's very quotable, so there it is. It is yeah, very quotable. Like you said. To be fair, the movie is out of context, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's floating Batman is, I think, <laughs> one of my favorite. Bring things. that Batman. Floating Batman. <laughs> oh, that's the Emperor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love also 
for the most most up until he writes the worms we've got a very straightforward um sci-fi epic soundtrack mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you got and by like Toto. Tr- yeah Toto. Toto, Toto and Brian Eno Brian Eno yeah. did the main theme I think okay and Toto provided the uh, and guitar then, but then as soon as the yeah, as soon as the, <laughs> the worms come in you got the <laughs> 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 Which is also like again. Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. Up until yeah. then, I'm like, this is a pretty standard soundtrack for Toto. Like, yeah. doing, the, doing the music, and then it was like, oh, there it is. You almost <laughs> feel like there it should go. be more 80s yeah, than it is. Yeah, I was hoping it would be, yeah. Because yeah. sure. everything comes back. So, of course, you know, in the year 10,000, that's like, we're really into Toto right now. <laughs> <laughs> what else have we got, guys? I have some quotes oh, okay. from David Lynch oh, on Dune. Please. I'm, please. I'm excited. <laughs> So he he doesn't like talking about Dune, and I don't even think in interviews he doesn't really talk about Dune anymore. But uh, so when they ask him about it, he, this is this is what he said: "I I don't know quite how that happened. That's my one uh, in my mind uh, big failure, and um, but I learned a tremendous amount on that film. Dune took three years to make, start to finish, but it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare." And he says, I didn't have final cut on that film, so I didn't have the final... Oh, he says, he says I didn't have final cut on The Elephant Man either, but Mel Brooks, in effect, gave it to me. And so that's the big lesson. Don't make a film if it, if it can't be the film you want to make. It's a joke, and a sick joke, and it will kill you. <laughs> that's David Lynch talking about, too. <laughs> Wait, look, uh, Lauren read that quote last night. And I'm like, oh, he's a crybaby. But then now, actually hearing that he's a decent guy, I do feel bad. Yeah, he's not a bad sense. man. Yeah. yeah. David Lynch like, is a sweetheart. Like, if you were a big princess, I feel yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like, screw mind. you. But that just sounds like he's passionate. I am glad that I still have, like, I can still have no qualms about loving David Lynch so much because my other f- favorite film director, I can't, I, it's almost like I have to be a closet like her now because it's Woody oh, Allen. Oh. oh. Uh, we have to. And, just, you have to not look at the real life. Like, yeah, it's the it, art it's stands hard. on its own. It is hard, and I want to. I don't even know what I believe about that situation. I, I don't know. think it's my. It's not my. It's fair. It's not my business. And it's really. hard. It's hard when it's Hollywood and like you know artistic personalities because there's so much rumors around what's yeah. true, and so that's happily one where I'm like, it's none of my business. I don't know what happened yeah. between him and. But that's why I love David Lynch. He's so uncomplicated. Yeah. Yeah. He he's, he spent thirty years every day. He would go to Bob's Big Boy for lunch for, <laughs> every day for thirty years, and he would just doodle and. And drink that's what I love about my favorite comedian. No problems, you know, like because Bill Cosby, he's just America's dad. He's lovable. Oh, he's so great. <laughs> I love him. I do love Bill Cosby. He's so, very so funny. Who was the other director you like? Woody I'm Allen. Sorry, Woody Allen. Oh, Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Because he's yeah. wonderful. I've seen all but I think six of Woody Allen's movies. <laughs> Um, which would seem like a large number if it wasn't with yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Considering he, I think he's coming up on 50 direct, 50 that he's directed. So, but that's, that's another story. If you make a movie a year for yeah. you know, your whole adult life. One of them's bound to be good. <laughs> Did they not make, um, gray hair extensions for Patrick Stewart? Because <laughs> when he comes back a few years later and he's got the long hair, His hair's it's long. black. Because we can't like put on a bald cap to show that he's aged, so we're gonna have to grow out the. <laughs> you grow out the side hair. Well, everyone knows that when you're in a war, you don't have time for getting your hair cut. <laughs> no. No That's why they just... cut it so short in boot camp because you're not gonna have time to cut yeah. it later. Uh. I like how they just kind of bump into each other too. Oh, hey. 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 Well, hey. What, what has he been doing and for he... two years? That like were these just the good family that happened to survive? What have they been hanging out doing that they're now suddenly fighting where the other people are fighting? There, there's a very strange arc <laughs> to the to the film once you get to the point where the Atreides start to gain some momentum in in the war effort. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they just completely annihilate the other side. There's no there's no drama. There's no. Uh, there's no nothing really. It's just them steamrolling into victory, you know. Which seems very easy and, on both sides. The Harkonnens sweep in and kill everyone like one go, and then yeah, the other team. Yeah, and like, no I, I feel. I think that it, that really is. There was a lot of edits, and in the deleted scenes, I'm going to keep referencing these. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was actually more of a subplot of uh, Kyle McLaughlin's character struggling with who he is and not wanting to do it and not wanting to lead these people and not wanting to kill. There's a whole scene where he kills like a Fremen, I think, 
mm-hmm. and like the, he has to battle this guy and he ends up killing him and they don't, and it's a big deal because it's the first person he ever killed mm-hmm. and he it's, in the scene someone says he he gives water for the dead person because he's crying he's um, leaking he's leaking <laughs> you know it's, water water was a big deal in the book like oh, I was yeah. reading yeah yeah, I think like, crying, crying over over a dead person is like the greatest honor, and like uh, spinning is oh, a thing too. Well, that was oh, something. So they they so yeah, they did film that. Yeah. I don't know if that was honoring, but I know like <laughs> spinning was some sort of like like it meant something in a ceremonial sense. Mm-hmm. I, I I really got into this Wikipedia, yeah. guys. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It was okay, by the way, that the the war did go so quickly, so easily, because they they um, put the climax at an hour nine in the film. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as he like kind of ex- as soon as we get the, uh, the 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 voice guns, the uh, <laughs> like that like the when weirding, he meets up with the, the planets, modules, it becomes like a very like straightforward movie where you're like, oh, I feel this like is this what movie it's all leading up to. <laughs> in Star Wars, are pretty similar in terms of how they play out. You know, like the, exactly the story the themselves, the early they, climax, the very yeah, the early like climax, the ending that's at you know with the yeah. emperor and everything involved, and they're all. I mean, it, it, that goes a little weird, but. <laughs> With Sting and everything, but <laughs> okay, going a back a little weird. <laughs> going back to Steamrolling <laughs> the Harko- the Harkonnens, like there's that moment with Sting where he fights Sting at the end, where he like he says something like I I, I don't remember the exact quote, but he says something like Yeah, let's kill that dirty Harkonnen or something. Yeah. Where he just ends up sounding like a genocidal maniac. You're like, he oh, does. he just wants to. Well, now he's self righteous. He's the freaking messiah. <laughs> he's the messiah, and Arrakis he's here to bring is, peace to everyone. Yeah. And we know, by killing the by best. killing yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and were you like me? Did you learn the word genocide in the movie where they defined it for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's a thing where it's like every t- every line of dialogue, it feels like it introduces six more details to the plot. <laughs> like, oh my god, it's like Lost. <laughs> we're gonna answer one question and answer seven. Uh, ask seven more. <laughs> what? Um, Most of my questions were what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to Doctor King's kind? Of, the Max von Sydow's character. Does, oh, I know they like uh, take him out with his suit. Like, they yeah, they kind of. That's kind of. It seems like he would die. Like we're gonna throw him. I desert. think he does die. But it would have been so much okay. nicer. If, I was expecting, and you'll get saved by the good people yeah. and be a part of the war effort. All right. He kind of just vanishes. Yeah. Well, and like he appears and vanishes. He's a badass. Really fast. I forgot he was in the movie. He's so great. Such a badass. Matt, what happens to the pug? Oh, please <laughs> the pug. tell me the pug is gone because I don't like pugs. They <laughs> actually uh, stop. Stop. <laughs> I want the pug in a cage. Know. That's in the deleted scene. And they tied a piece of poop to him. <laughs> and they use the, he, the pug is now being used for milk. Every time, every time there was a natural animal in the movie, it was jarring. Like the cat yeah. rat was obviously creepy, but there's a point where they're walking English, English bulldogs through a scene. I love that the dogs and, are never explained. And the pug just shows up, like when they're traveling to the planet. Yeah, and and like, the pug right next to the Duke. The it feels jarring. Like, I, what? I, there's I, nature in this I like world. to think that they're equal, kind of like sentient members of society you know, like, <laughs> oh know. it's like a man in black pug yeah yeah <laughs> I, I think the battlefield is no place for a pug I mean no. any yeah. domesticated dog but especially maybe like a, a Saint Bernard uh-huh. or something well, I mean, you yeah, missed the know. deleted scene where he takes out like six Argonauts because <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird when they're bites him in the neck yeah. when the good family are being attacked by the Harkonnens like Patrick Stewart shows up with the dog looks like oh he's rescuing the dog oh no we're going in the battle with the dog <laughs> he throws the this dog is a terrible doesn't he pledge allegiance right before that too <laughs> <laughs> to the dog to the dog <laughs> to the pug all right, guys, so we should probably move on to our segments, the first of which is Bobby and Laura discuss gender politics in the movie we just watched. I got the eye of the tiger. Susan B. Anthony was on the dollar coin for a week. Stop objectifying me. Gloria Steinem. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Equal rights. Amendment was never ratified. Rosie the Riveter. Oh my God, Bobby, shut up. Rosie the Robot. Who's going to make me my sandwich? My body, my choice. Blatant. Blatant. Susan B. Anthony was taken off the dollar for a reason. Beyonce. This Good should be luck. interesting. It should be. <laughs> you have anything to say? Um, I don't really know what to think, what the gender politics were going for. Because you have this bad Reverend Mother, you know, to see... Jessica for not, you know, carrying on the female bloodline. And so that to me was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like that good. Like you want more women in your society. But then 
you know, they have that, we're like, oh, man will save us, you know, and he'll lead us to salvation. So, I mean, you kind of get mixed messages in this movie. So, I mean, I guess I'm like, I think that it's like, I would say if I had to like settle on something, I would say it's like, like maybe like neutral, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't know if he <laughs> does have anything. Like, I, I no. think it was pretty far from neutral. Like, I think, <laughs> like, this was, like, super, super misogynistic and, and horrible. Like, it is a Reagan era movie. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the Messiah. Like, so, like so you have... it's neutral by Reagan era. <laughs> Thank like, goodness like, this rich white man will like, save us all. I mean, if Sean Young's character, like, in and of herself wasn't, like, enough to make you just go, like, whoa, what the hell no, is going like, on with the gender no, politics in this movie? No, I'm not saying it was yeah. good. I'm just saying, like, I don't really know what it is. Fit. Like I don't know if the movie, if like the the four hour cut, like mm-hmm. if it's more of like a pro feminine movie, or if it's still the same. Like if it's still the same, then yeah, absolutely, it's anti feminist. But I, I imagine it would be really hard, even in a four hour cut, to write out the whole like, oh, here we're like a race of awesome women, but we're waiting for that like one guy to make us complete because <laughs> we have he this, can do all the things that we can't do. We have this one jar we can't quite open. <laughs> 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 All the things that women can't do. <laughs> but then you have his mom, who's like the head of these Freemans, who like she becomes kind of like the I forget what the name they gave her, you know, because she takes Jessica. Over. Lady <laughs> no, that was her. Well, like, which well, is no, horrible the, sci-fi name. Like everyone has a mother superior for their. Oh, is she the mother superior? Something like for the, like their head religious yeah. person, let's say. Like that aspect, like there are aspects of it that don't. Sure, and like they they cut to like women warriors at the end with the the, the Framens, I think one or two, one or two, but to let you know, like, hey, no, it's cool, they're it's there too. Right. But like, yeah, this movie was also done in the eighties too, so this was a long like yeah, a, way, I mean, way, we, way like, before women's fan. suffrage. Yeah. And all that stuff. <laughs> Princess Leia wasn't thing yet. <laughs> Could women even vote then? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just saying. In terms no, I'm of saying that. other movies in the eighties were pro- like you know. But even now, like, are, are far from, from treating their women characters correctly. Way but... better now, though, with Trump, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, at this point, everything. Ellen Ripley was decades in the future. Like, we'd never seen a strong female in sci-fi, so... Oh, <laughs> 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 when did that come out? 77. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is first? 77 or 83? <laughs> oh, my no, God. No, I'm just saying that, I mean... <laughs> that's fair like yeah. I I can see the argument that maybe it's not trying to be overtly anti-female like it's trying I don't it think just it's realize just, what it's doing I, I don't think it realizes what it's doing at all like I don't think there's any sort of the misogyny might be all Frank Herbert's fault for all I know but it feels super misogynistic <laughs> there, there are uh, issues in all of David Lynch's movies with misogyny to mm-hmm. a certain extent how about homophobia because um, <laughs> that's another big point that people yeah, are making. I, I don't think so. I don't think not, okay. not with Lynch. Maybe with Dune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now let's talk about um, our our newest and laziest segment: <laughs> the IDOBM IMDb trivia uh, segment. Because oh. you know the first what? thing I do. I almost wrote down some in my <laughs> notes just to bring in. I could see that you're doing because, like, ah, oh, I remember yeah. reading that fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lauren called the IMDb trivia section. I love the IMDb trivia. It's, it's fun. so it's and amazing. It feels like it requires a certain amount of research because I feel like I need two sources to prove this is a real fact. <laughs> but we touched on some. I love. The, well, that's why like... it won't be slander or whatever because it's like, well, IMDb says it. <laughs> but I love looking through the trivia the like could have been moments of history like yeah. that Ridley Scott could have done this movie but then he went on to do Blade Runner or that David Lynch almost did Return of the Jedi but then he did this instead like oh what could have been but just to touch on the like the big controversy that I was reading about that this movie is accused of being so terribly homophobic because the Baron the big terrifying pus riddled just disgusting bad guy is references being a homosexual like he's iron sting pretty heavily and the movie was accused of referencing the AIDS crisis with his just horribly riddled ill frame yeah. and so yeah reading around like there was lots of discussion of this being accused of being terribly homophobic and so very curious where that came from if he is described in the book as being so I wonder, intensely I gross because that or... book well re- predates the AIDS crisis yeah. and so that's a thing which is why I wanted the explanation on where why they were so yeah. space aids mm-hmm. space, space aids. aids okay and so yeah I was curious I'd like to read more about whether or not that was intentional it's just, just a moment of like oh no it was before people realized that that was an offensive depiction but it wasn't intentional like 
that I think was interesting one. I think it's unfair for a movie like Dune to be labeled wildly homophobic or something like that. When you have a movie like The Shawshank Redemption, which is extremely homophobic and kills a gay character, right? Yeah. Like you, there, there's gay, there's gay punishment. Basically. You have to be human to be gay, <laughs> says Morgan Freeman's character. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and that movie's completely beloved. I can't. I hate that movie. Really? I do Ooh, not like wow. Shawshank Redemption at all. I haven't seen it. I heard it here, folks. That's that's a, it's a bold bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> that, that might be when we next time we do a reverse episode where we def, where we defend a prosecute group. a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now let's move on to the movie we wish we'd seen. Ugh, this movie is crap. I could write a better movie in my sleep. And now, IDOBM presents the movie we'd wish we'd seen. And that is, of course, when we take an an element, an aspect... Uh, put those together, you get element, is what I was about to say, uh, of this movie that you'd like to see maybe going off in a di- different direction, a parallel story, a sequel, a prequel, a character who you want to get their own movie, something like that. Uh, let's start with Bobby. Uh, I would love to see a parallel story about Patrick Stewart's character mm-hmm. in those in Those, those two inter- misty yeah. years? Uh-huh. What's he doing? <laughs> well, he took control of the starship, and, <laughs> and he gathered a bunch of teens together who had special powers. And <laughs> it links all of Patrick Stewart's filmography together. Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. How about Lauren? How about you? I want to see a kids' movie that follows from the point of view of the pug. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess kind of fits like growing up in the castle, all these crazy science things going around, and then what a war, and then he saves the day at the end. A hard one. No, right? <laughs> I would like to see a horror movie about that little, um, the little Jesuit girl who, with the ADR voice, <laughs> because just what I saw was pretty terrifying. So if she had her own movie, um, like pro- not a, I was gonna say was problem there, child, but like bad seed symbolism with her having red hair and then the the um, the Harkonians having red hair too. Was that like? Oh, a, I don't know. Did she have red hair? Yeah. Did we ever see Alicia yeah, yeah, Witt? Yeah. Right, but did we see the yeah, kids' hair? Yeah, we did. Hair yeah. Or yeah. 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 Can her go to killing move be popping people and having them fly out windows into the room? <laughs> Finish him. And it was lucky that the worm was right there, wasn't yeah. it? That yeah, last lucky. last evil coup de grace against the bad guys seems very fortunate. Like, they had God on their that, side. Uh, okay, that's oh, true. That's Never mind. Wrong. That always explains. Four hour cut and God on your side explains any plot hole. <laughs> We've established that God hates the gay. So, yeah. <laughs> and Laura, how about you? Um, I want to see the story that follows Sting's character. <laughs> That was a really good point because they they set up that that fight at the end like oh it's a big deal uh-huh. and you kind of get the feeling like well it's a big deal because it's Sting nothing was set up in the movie yeah. he even says something earlier on like I wish this was Paul right doesn't mm-hmm. he yeah at one point and you're like oh why oh interesting Paul? what <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he seems to really want to kill Paul but why after you've won the war do you decide that your leader is going to have a hand to hand fight with a bad guy that's a terrible <laughs> choice shoot the bad guy <laughs> it's a dirty hard <laughs> That would be interesting. And Matt, you like this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> um, it's not my favorite David Lynch movie, but it, ooh, that's, I do love it. What is your favorite as a side trick? Uh, Eraserhead. Okay. Now, let's throw out, uh, you'd like to see the three or four hour version, I'm assuming, too. If it exists, there yeah. in the in the bonus features, they mention that it probably doesn't even actually exist. Lost footage. Yeah. Not not even that, like it was never oh, actually see. that. Okay. Like there was never a cut that was four hours. That's okay. what That's what they said. So I don't know. Oh, that's too bad. So I would love to see it. Aside from those, is there anything in the movie that maybe you'd like to see go off on its own? Honestly, uh, Laura, Laura, what Laura said, I, I want, I want more of Sting because well, they kind of set it up like, oh, he's really important with this. Yeah, other and guy. he's really not important at all. No. He doesn't do anything except for come out of his steam bath. Which <laughs> Isn't that enough? I'm fine with that. <laughs> but I do, Yeah, I either, I either want him completely nixed, which takes away, you know, the beautiful eye of the duck scene. But or but there was the other one. There was the other one at the end, and that's that's with Alia, when she's I think she's outside in the sand and she's like dancing. It's after the Baron's killed. It's and it's they cut away really quickly from her. Yeah, because they disappear. Like the Baron goes into the mouth of the worm. Right? Yeah, and then, and then she's outside like doing this weird dance day-day. or something, and it's in slow motion, so you think it's gonna last, <laughs> uh-huh. and then it just uh, like cuts away immediately, and you're just like, oh, 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 never mind. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I want more of Sting. 
I'd like to see just any of those just movies. so I know what what's going on with him. <laughs> you know, just so I can hear him talk maybe more than once. <laughs> <laughs> or also Max von Sydow's character, I thought it was mm-hmm. thought he was really interesting, and and it felt like there was more <clears throat> to him, but then they cut him out really yeah. fast. Mm-hmm. Maybe his role in Game of Thrones coming up will tie yeah, into this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, is he yeah. in that? He's, He's going to be just yeah. Or his role in uh, Star Wars coming up. What? That's yeah. right. <gasps> that would be a more natural. Since obviously or some, Game of Thrones like takes a, place like in a, class. Like a, like a, a midway point between the two. Okay, Maybe he had to prepare for his scenes in Hannah and her sisters. Because he is in <laughs> yeah. that. And that was two years later. So he might have been preparing for that. And that was more important. That yeah, was much more important than Dune. Right. <laughs> I mean, I imagine that Dune is the galaxy far, far away immediately next to the galaxy far, far away that we all know from Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like They're just like neighbors. And mm-hmm. if you just like do a super time jump, you could be over there. Okay, hey, what's happening in space. your neck of the woods? Yeah, full space. I'm a thousand percent behind a crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to JJ. It's not too late. <laughs> and now everyone's favorite segment, Bad Movie Movie Raps. This is, of course, where we talk about if we were to visit the major setting of this movie, what sort of rap we would wear around us. <laughs> now this is a desert setting, but they go underground a lot. They so do. So there's, there's like... What sort of Lauren? You made a really good point because we looked into it. They identify, you know, the planet surface is such and such Kelvin, which we looked up the conversion. That's like 160 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. But then you're below ground, and there's all that secret water below ground that we're doing something with eventually. So it's probably much cooler. So I think you need something light and breezy, but then also mm-hmm. if you like something with layers, so you can take off the top layer and be okay for your 160 degrees. And then you get something a little like woolier to protect you on the like subterranean nights. How about, you, how about anyone else? I think you absolutely need the suits that the Fremens wear yeah, on, <laughs> on Dune. I mean, the, they're fully functional. You can poop and pee in them. And then useful. eat it. And the, I don't know what happens with it, but it's in the thighs somewhere, and it gets, you know... It's reabsorbed in it, it vanishes somehow. There's, that, somewhere. there's that moment where... Um, we're kind of, I think it's with the, the Fremens where Kyle McLaughlin puts on the suit for the first time. Yeah. And like the first kind of hint that he might be their chosen one is like, hey, he looks like really good in a suit. Like, oh, no, no, <laughs> he's he's wearing it. But he puts it on for yeah. yeah. desert style. Yeah, like, he puts his camel back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's right. Yeah. There's more than one way to wear the body armor suit. Yes. <laughs> and you're wearing it all. You have it like thrown over your shoulder in the desert style. <laughs> That is a good choice. Wow. It's like a wetsuit too, doesn't it? Because it's like really tight and. It's and it looks like you've got abs all the way up to your neck. Mm. They uh, apparently, they were really comfortable. Oh, but cool. until they got to Mexico and they started filming the scenes, then they were not comfortable. Uh, and, Especially when the Montezuma's Revenge hit, <laughs> which happened. And they had to eat the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, we went scatological. That's oh, I'm sorry. But that actually happened. That was part of trivia. That there was a no, they did. I don't think they had to eat it. No, I don't think they had to eat it. That's fair. <laughs> That's good. If they were, Lynch would be a really awful director. <laughs> How about Lauren Bobby? Method. I, well, I wouldn't wear a wrap. I I, I tape a, a rat to my side. <laughs> okay, that's fair. No, no. I, I, no. I would wear the suit that they had. Really, last time it was Bobby who bailed out of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the wraps. Oh, that's the answer. You could wear uh, the the floating suit. Ooh. That's much more fun. There was it a suit that made him float? Was it a suit? I I assumed it was the no. Suit. He had he had powers. Oh, yeah, magical it's... powers. Yeah. I assumed it was a suit. So wait, okay. What I does she do at the end when he when he flies around? That, that was, was like sort of his, his heart plug. He type took thing. out his, his nipple plugs. Okay. Which yeah, yeah. Were right, right. Because everyone had the heart. When she pulled the heart plug out, kills him. But he had something different. I thought, and I think it was almost like Immortan Joe in in Mad Max, where it was like keeping him alive, basically. I felt I like that's what it was. I he was full of air, and that's how he floated. <laughs> and then she, like just, she went out, and, and like, so it, was like, it was like letting the air out of the air. Yeah, that's what and I thought, And it happened to be that moment that a hole opened up. Well, it ceiling. also showed her a floating uh, needle. The right. thing she pulled out, right? Wasn't it? No, I think she, no, she, she had the finger, finger needle. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. With poison on it, because yeah. I think she says it. That she, poison? Because I was curious. <laughs> yeah. And I would just want to wear something that you could convert into a turban when you're outside. That sounds cool. Um. So... Let's let's go around the room. Uh, how do you feel, Bobby? Do you has your, has your mind been changed about this? Movie? She's honestly like listening to Matt. I'm like, wow, this is like a this is a cool movie that I totally misread. Um, it's um, it's like if it, it feels impenetrable at times. Like I, I we rewound a lot, and it took like I would say like a good two and a half hours to get through like its two hour length, or two hours and forty five minutes to get through its like two hour fifteen minute length. But um, it like I said earlier, it's an interesting bad movie like even if i didn't like it it was 
interesting. Like, I, there are worse things to do with two hours. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, w- I would recommend watching it if you haven't. What about you, Laura? <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend it to people, <laughs> but I mean, it's a very it's a very specified genre of movie of a movie to watch. And if you're into sci-fi and Star Wars, then yeah, I'd say check it out. But um, for me, it was, it was interesting. It was an interesting experience. And, you know, hearing this is, makes a lot more sense, you know. So I can see that there was, like, a bigger vision to this. But And then also, I haven't read the book, so that might impact, you know, if you have read the book, then maybe check out the movie. Yeah. Oh. Can I ask Laura a question? Because we've established previously in this podcast that Laura is not a fan of Star Wars. Laura, if you had to pick between Star Wars and Dune, on on the record right now, which one would you pick? Can I say huge. that they're like equal in my mind? Okay. That's fine. Laura, Laura King says that Star Wars that's and Dune are equal. That's a win for me. That's out there. That is a that win is for Dune to be equal to Star Wars. If you're a fan of Star Wars, they watch put, Dune. They should put that on the DVD. <laughs> Laura King Laura, says, on a power with Star Wars. <laughs> Um, show of hands, who kind of wants to read the book now? Mm-hmm. I've um, always kind of wanted to read it. But I don't, yeah. I kind of want to read a lot of books. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm actually I, I, not a huge sci-fi person. Really? I don't think this movie is very sci-fi in really? its approach. It feels like a very classic Hollywood movie to me. Mm-hmm. In terms of like the, the acting and the way the, set, the scenes are set up and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I just, I just love Lynch, so I'll watch anything <laughs> he does. Oh, Lauren, how about you? I did not like this movie. Um, <laughs> even even after all the talk, and I, I of course, like always want to see the better realized version of it, where they do some better writing and expositional cuts, and that would be more helpful. But no, I don't like this movie. But I will say, in talking with Matt, I feel like I might like David Lynch. I've always assumed... As a person. As a, like, always, I've always assumed, looking at you know what I know of him, like, oh, he's probably the crazy auteur and is just the insane man. So I'm really comforted to hear that he's just like a nice, humble, cool guy. And that's neat. And that, I feel like, makes me be more open to him. Okay. And I'm going to agree with Lauren. And um, maybe if the movie is shaved like 30 to 45 minutes off, I could recommend <laughs> it as a... As an oddity. I'm sure they tried. <laughs> but as it is, it is a bit too long to really sell it as a good, bad movie. And Matt, your opinion, I assume, is, is unchanged. Oh, absolutely unchanged. <laughs> I, I, I really do like this movie, and I think there is a lot to like it. And I think we've mentioned it, you know, throughout the podcast. This, the You know, the quotes, the great quotes, and, <laughs> you know, the, the weird uh, Harkonnen faces and mm-hmm. everything that you guys were talking about. I think I think I've come out looking pretty good here, because I, I can't. I honestly thought that I was going to come in here and be torn to pieces. <laughs> your your mini sewed. You sounded so mean, and mad. I had and I was it. like, he must have watched it already. No. <laughs> <laughs> that you were just listening to the what pisses Sam off, or yeah. what's pissing Sam off now part. <laughs> but that was the first time you'd ever even included that in the mini too. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is all. That, this that was the question. Exit from the movie. And <laughs> So, you know, the fact that I get her to put it on par with Star Wars and you love David Lynch now. And, and Bobby would recommend... And Bobby recommends it. I'm good. I want, to, I want to be clear. I do not think this is a good movie. <laughs> Laura says on par with Star Wars. But Bobby I don't like said, Star Wars. And Bobby so, I mean... said greatest movie ever. <laughs> and Lauren said, David Lynch is my best friend. <laughs> But you've defended it very well. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you yeah. Point out Thank compelling you. things. And it, yeah, it's fun. I've, I've had fun. Um, I'm going to plug Upperclassmen, my improv group, has a show at October 18th, 7 p.m. at the Long Beach Playhouse. You can get tickets at the door for $10 or save half of your hard earned money. Well, not half of your hard earned money. Half of that money. Uh, get it from one of us ahead of time. Five bucks. We're not dropping for the August show? We are not dropping for the August show. <clears throat> Sorry. It's okay. Uh, anyone else have anything to plug? I plug that I love you. Oh. Uh-huh. And then Facebook. Are you the listeners? Stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's throw that out there for... We have a Facebook page and a Twitter page, so... IDOBM yeah. and, podcast? And Matt has um, a Facebook page as well. I he do. writes movie reviews. Are you still doing that? I'm still doing it, but I haven't done it since I started my new job. So I'm trying to figure out how to balance those two things but, but it is still there and people can read it but for anyone in the Asperia Apple Valley Victorville area they can start reading you you can yeah read me online at vvdailypress.com 
if you're interested in Apple Valley or Murder <laughs> Trials. Ooh. Who's that? Um, true crime. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at DP underscore Matthew Cabe. Uh, and that would make me look really good at work, actually. Oh, cool. Okay. If people could follow me. Uh, it's all different. Anyone, follow please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really go on Twitter. Really. Devil I penetration. Don't. I didn't either until I got okay. this job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this comes from the I Do BM yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And remember that Matt won his place on the show by winning our secret contest that we didn't tell any about. So, <laughs> who knows what secret contests us, are, st- are still going on? If you're actually a listener, you should give it a try. See what you could win. Yep. And that is in defense of bad movies at gmail.com or any of the other things. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you, every, uh, thank you guys for this. And special thanks to Matt for defending this movie. Thank you for having me. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bring in that floating fat man. So now you want to pretend like we're talking about things, like we're fading out as oh, the music yeah. picks up. Yeah. I like the music. You know, I was thinking that yeah. American Beauty has that duck scene at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Right? That's like the what he's trying to. Like, what no, he, it's not like a little oh. or is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking about a literal duck. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, right? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 like the I just mean the eye of the duck scene isn't the isn't the actual yeah. like, literal. There's not a duck in the movie. Right, right. No, in the eye, like the eye of the duck. Quack, 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 quack. What was your Twitter name?